All right, layer three, the network layer. This is where stuff gets interesting because now we're going to leave our internal network and start sending things to uh, external networks. So we're going to leave our LAN and go into WANs. So with layer three, we are concerned about forwarding our traffic based on logical addresses. So most common one that you're going to see is IP addressing because that's what we use nowadays. Um, the other things that we're concerned with, with layer three is logical addressing, switching, and when we're talking about switching, we're not talking about switches. Okay, This tends to confuse a lot of students. When we talk about switching, we're talking about how data is going to go from one network to another through routing. And when the routers do their transmissions, they call that switching, which is not a switch. So just we'll, we'll get into that. You'll, you'll understand it a little bit more later. But I just want to point that out, that when we talk about switching, we're not talking about what a switch does. We're talking about what a router does. Um, Route discovery and selection, uh, and we'll also talk about connection services, bandwidth usage, and again, some more multiplexing strategies. So logical addressing. <clears throat> Over the years, we've had lots of different routing protocols. We didn't always use IP services. Uh, if you were an Apple user with the old Macintosh days, they had a thing called Apple Talk. Uh, if you were a Novell Netware user, uh, they used to use Internetwork Packet Exchange, or IPX. Uh, which was even covered, and Windows used that in the first couple iterations of Windows as well. In fact, it still supports it if you happen to have a network that still runs it. But most of us nowadays are using IP, Internet Protocol. Uh, version 4 was the most common, and now we're starting to use version 6 a lot more. Um, and right now, pretty much Internet Protocol is the only dominant standard out there for networking. Um, pretty much after the year 2000, most IPX networks and Apple Talk networks have pretty much gone away. So when we talk about switching, what we're talking about is how the data is actually forwarded by routers. We have three different methods of doing it. We have what's called packet switching, which is also known as routing, uh, where we take the packets and each individual packet is divided up into a packet, and that packet is then sent over the network, and each of those can take a different path or different direction. So for instance here, if I need to go from this router on the, the bottom left up to the top right, I can take a, a packet, and a packet can go this path. Another packet can take this path. Another packet might take this path. Um, as long as it all gets to the final router, the final router will put it all back together into the original message, and so it'll be okay. The other way we can do things is what's called circuit switching. And with circuit switching, the path is established between the first router and the last router, and all the packet, all the information will be sent over that circuit. So this is kind of like your, your telephone system, right? If you think about the old public switch telephone network, when you picked up the phone and called grandma's house, it would go take whatever route it needed to. For the whole time of your call, you're on the same path. But with data packets, we don't need to have that kind of consistency, so it'll take whatever path it needs to to get there. But with voice, it usually does do circuit switching, at least in the old voice networks. Uh, message switching is where we actually take our data and divide it up into messages, which is very similar to packet switching, uh, but these messages can actually be stored and forwarded, like an email, if you think of it that way. Um, so your data on your network can actually be taken and go from place to place in these message chunks and sit there and wait until it's ready to be received. Not very commonly used. The most one, excuse me, the one you're going to use most often is packet switching, uh, which is also known as routing. Uh, if you work on your CCNA, for instance, the test you take, the first one, is called the routing and switching test. That's what they're talking about, is packet switching networks. So routers also have to discover and select which routers they're going to use. And they do this through the use of a routing table. Uh, the routing table is basically a big long table that says where all the routers are, where all the gateways are, uh, and which ones it should use based on some sort of metric. These can be configured manually using a static route where I can say, hey, if I want to get information to Michelle, it's always going to go through John first. right? And so I'm going to go through John to Michelle even though maybe John's slow, maybe he broke his leg and he can't move as fast, so if I gave it to Jennifer, she can get it all the way across the room to Michelle faster, right? But if I set up a static route, it's always going to go that way. Or I can do it dynamically, uh, where the routers will talk to themselves using different protocols, whether it's RIP, uh, Router Information Protocol, OSPF, which is Open Shortest Path First, or EIGRP, uh, which is an Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. We'll talk about all the protocols later on in another module. Um, but each of these protocols has a different metric, whether it's based on difference, whether it's based on time, whether it's based on speed, uh, that we'll talk about. And based on whichever one has the lowest metric is the one the router is going to use first. That way the information can get to you fastest. 
Uh, the way I like to think about this is if I want to go down to DC this afternoon, I'm going to pull up my Waze application, right? I'm going to type in the address, and it's going to figure out the fastest way to get there based on current conditions and current traffic, right? Whereas in the old days, what would we do? We'd pull out an atlas and maybe look at the shortest route miles-wise, right? Or we use MapQuest in the old days, right, back in like 2000 era, and it would go, oh, well, anytime somebody wants to go to DC from Baltimore, they should get on 95 and go south, right? Um, but maybe that's not the fastest way to get there today because there's a huge accident. With router discovery, if you're using automatic router discovery and selection, using that dynamic, it can automatically update based on routers being up, routers being down, traffic jams on the network, all of those things, and reroute the traffic around. So using your dynamic protocols is usually the best option. There are a few cases where you will want to use a static route, though. And then we have connection services. So our Layer 3 connection services augment the Layer 2 connection uh, to provide us even more reliability. So in Layer 2, we talked about that there was some flow control and some error correcting. Well, now at Layer 3, we're going to have more of that. So again, we have more flow control, so we can uh, make sure that the sender doesn't send too much so that I overwhelm you. And the other thing we do is we do packet reordering. So because we're sending all these packets across the network and they can take different paths, when they get to their destination, they need to be put back in the right order. If you think about if I took a textbook that has 500 pages and sent 500 pages out to get to California and I sent them in different ways, they may not get there in the right order, right? So when they get to the other end, the person in California needs to take them and go, okay, page one goes here, page two goes here, and put them back in the right order so you can read the book. Um, for those people who, who used to be in the Navy, uh, in the old days, before we had email on ships, people used to send letters, right? And so their, their wives and kids would send them letters when they were on the ship. Well, the mail didn't always get there in the right order. So they would always label the letters on the outside of the envelope, number one, number two, number three. So the guy who got it can look at it and go, this is number three, but I haven't gotten number two. Maybe I should wait to read number two first, right? Because sometimes you'd read something in number three that was referencing number two and you didn't understand it. Uh, and so that's packet reordering needed to be done to make sure you got them in the right order. And the whole idea with that is we're going to send stuff over the quickest route, um, but sometimes they go quicker routes than others, and so we got to make sure it's in the right order to receive it. And some examples of Layer 3, routers are by far the most common, right? Routing is all about Layer 3. Um, the other thing at Layer 3 is multi-layer switches. So in the last module, we talked about regular switches. Uh, multi-layer switches have the ability to do both IP routing and switching, as well as MAC address switching. Um, and so multi-layer switches operate at layers 2 and layers 3. Uh, IPv4 and IPv6 are both uh, protocols that are used in routing. Uh, older protocols are things like IPX and Apple Talk. Those were also routing uh, layer 3's, network layer. And then the other one we have is ICMP, which is Internet Control Message Protocol, which does things like ping and traceroute for us and some troubleshooting functions, which we will play with in the command line module. And that is the basics of layer 3.